Got it, folks. Would you want this from needcoffee.com here? Back again for another Way Homer review. Here's how it works for the uninitiated. I have just left the cinema. It's behind you that way. And I've seen a film. And I'm going to tell you about that film on my way home. And today, we're here to talk about The Raven. <clears throat> Let me buckle up. Buckle up. It's going to be an interesting review. No. Um, all right, synopsis. Synopsis is this. Edgar Allan Poe, you know him, you love him. He's uh, <clears throat> towards the end of his days, and it seems like somebody has decided that they're going to emulate the murders in his stories. So much so that it's basically a, a game between the killer and Poe with the police to catch the killer before he kills again. And, <clears throat> I'm not giving anything away because it's in the trailer, but our friend Edgar has found a new love in his life, and the killer has taken it upon himself at some point to abscond with the young, ma the young lady and, uh, and, and hold her hostage to keep Edgar in the game. Can Edgar stop the killer before the killer gets away with murder? and uh, basically ripping off his stories in the process. There's your synopsis. Now, on one hand, everyone's first reaction to this, I think, fairly universally, was John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe. And my thought was, John Cusack is Edgar Allan Poe, yes, but when you've seen some of the Roger Corman Edgar Allan Poe films that I have and others have, really you wouldn't put anything past anybody. The last time we had a movie regarding Poe called The Raven, it was about dueling magicians and wizards and craziness, and uh, had Peter Lorre dressed as a raven. So I mean, you know, we're at least we're at least sort of trying to do something in the realm of somewhere. Uh, but, and don't get me wrong, the Corman Post, they're wonderfully silly. Uh, they're fun. So, my thought was, well, you know, we, look where we've come from. If, if you're trying to do some sort of serious Poe-related thing, um, at least there's hope. Because, I mean, really, you've got the Corman Poe films, and then Poe has been remade lots and lots of times normally for very low budget and normally not very well. So, I held out some hope. And I like John Cusack. And really the trailer, the trailer made it out uh, to be what I was calling Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows. I mean, uh, Edgar Allan Poe Game of Shadows. See, it just trips off the tongue like that. Um, and, uh, and I thought, well, it looks like it's really gonna be in that direction. Okay. The problem is, it's it's not even Edgar Allan Poe, Game of Shadows. John Cusack doesn't get to do very much. I mean, he sort of looks the part. He's got the Van Dyke thing going. He's pale. He kind of got that right. But that's about it. And the problem is, <clears throat> and in Cusack, Cusack's defense, I think he could play a really great Edgar Allan Poe in a decent movie about Edgar Allan Poe, or even a decent movie starring Edgar Allan Poe. And here's the infuriating thing, is that if I had just told you the plot, without trying to be cute about it, that listen, it's Baltimore, somebody's using the works of Edgar Allan Poe to kill people, you know, as an inspiration for serial murders, and Poe has to solve the mystery, Offhand, that sounds like that could be cool, or at least fun, or at least romping, okay? This thing, I mean, to quote Python, it wouldn't romp if you put five million volts through it, right? I think it's paraphrased, I think it was four in the original, but regardless, the problem is, the script just sort of hangs there. Um, they do things that make no sense, I mean, really, I mean, this isn't really a spoiler, because it's not important, but 
I, I've never heard the bit about Poe having a pet raccoon. I mean, I almost expected that they thought it was going to be an animated spinoff where it could be Edgar Allan Poe and that's his sidekick, the talking, you know, raccoon. A pet raccoon? I don't remember that part. Now, I, I don't consider myself the greatest Poe scholar in the world. Maybe I missed that. And I'm not even going at this from the standpoint of, well, this isn't realistic. I don't remember him writing that bit, and I don't remember this or that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You have an obvious divergence in historical fiction here. That's fine. But it's not very entertaining. It's not a lot of fun. It's not romping. It, it almost... <clears throat> It's almost like, rather than trying to make it into this really nice homage to Poe all the way around, it almost feels like they said, uh, I got an idea. What if we said, let's take an author, any author, and, well, hopefully one in the public domain because we don't want to pay anybody, and then... Let's use them as the as the you know the, the protagonist in a serial killer film. I don't know. Well, who's in the public domain? Poe. It felt like a. It felt like they went at it backwards, because really, the, you could almost take. And again, apart from the, the style of the murders and and the and the and the stuff like that, you know, just change up the murders. And really, you could put any crime author in there, assuming that they're in the public domain. You'd have to pay to get the rights of the stories. So, it didn't even have that homage to Poe feel to it, which would have made it kind of nice. There's one bit, one bit, that is worthy, and that makes you wish that John Cusack was playing Poe in a better Poe movie, is that when he's talking about the death of his young wife, Virginia, which I'm glad they addressed, because I'm sitting there going, okay, I know this is supposed to be historical fiction, but you really can't leave that out. That scene where he's talking about that is really the most effective thing in the film. And it makes you go, well, why didn't you just do, you know, John Cusack, if you wanted to play Poe, let's get you a Poe biopic and let, let you go nuts. You can obviously do it based on this scene. So that felt really well written. It was really well written, I'm turning into Jonathan Ross. It, uh, it was really well written and felt like it was from another movie. It stood out so much. But you have just scenes that linger too long. You've got scenes that are unnecessary with unnecessary gore. And you know me, I'm fine with gore. But I'm just like, really? You're not gonna you're not gonna turn the camera away. Really? You're gonna show us this. Because if you turn the camera away, away right now, it would be really effective, but no you don't know effective, you're just going to linger on that shot. Okay, all right, whatever works for you, buddy. I mean, it's just disappointing all around. The action sequences aren't very thrilling. The chase isn't very thrilling. It just feels like it, it's constantly trying to get out of first gear when it's projected itself as, as, a, you know, as an action adventure type of serial killer chase thing. But there's not a lot of, you know, action or adventure just disappointment and frankly resentment because like I said this the, the premise itself is really cool but they just don't really do anything with it and it's not really anybody the cast fault especially Cusack it just felt like it needed a better script I mean I'm not even gonna say well I won't even say you know I could have done a polish here and there probably need a completely different script to be perfectly honest um, and better editing and directing. It just pretty much was disappointing and sort of infuriatingly so because now anytime that you want to take this because you've already proven that it seems to me that your entire idea was insert author into serial killer movie which could be cool but instead you've kind of screwed that up for a while now. There, if, if anyone does one they're going to go direct a video. So disappointing all the way around. Anyway, so cup-wise, I'm giving it half a cup for that one scene. Because that one scene was pretty great. That was the one where I actually felt engaged. Cause, oh, because part of the other problem is that, okay, Poe 
in real life, having never met the man, don't know, may have been the insufferable prick that they painted him as, to begin with, completely full of himself, and not anyone you would want to know in real life. But it's not a great way to endear us to your protagonist. I mean, base, I'm, I'm like going, at that point, I'm, uh, you know, he's such a prick, and I love Poe, but this Poe is such a prick that I'm going, man, I haven't even met the killer, and I'm rooting for the killer at this point. Jesus Christ, man. So, that's not good. So finally, with that one scene, you, you see not justification for him being a prick, but just you get some sort of human connection with him whatsoever. Because, quite frankly, everything up to that point has been either Poe is an insufferable prick or John Cusack in a Van Dyke. Because he hasn't given anything other to do, you know, anything to do other than be one of those two things. So there you go, half a cup. Should you see it? No. Uh, you should, if anything, go... If, if you actually want to enjoy a film and just, in, you know, revel in some silliness, go rent the Roger Corman Raven. I mean, come on, don't get me wrong. It's, it has little to nothing, 2% to do with the poem itself. But at least it knows what it is and isn't, you know, ashamed to go, woo, and be stupid. This took itself way too seriously and just, oh, disappointing. Very disappointed. I don't know, Poe. Go search, go, go search the website if you don't, if you, if you doubt me. I went to Baltimore for his actual funeral, the first funeral that he had. So I, I know a bit about Poe, but that's not why I'm pissed off at this film. I'm pissed off because of wasted potential. So there you go. Better luck next time. Hey, it could be worse. We could have had that uh, Poe. We do. We were gonna have a Poe biopic that was gonna be Michael Jackson, the late singer Michael Jackson, was going to play Poe in motion capture. This was an actual rumor. I didn't invent that. Um, anyway, so there you go. I feel sort of drained of all life at this point. All right. So until next time, uh, thanks so much for watching these. Uh, as always, uh, if you do enjoy them, share them with someone, and, uh, and come, find us on Facebook. We don't bite, normally. Needcoffee.com slash Facebook will take you right to us. And uh, please, if you like The Way Homers, like us on Facebook and help spread the word. So until next time, uh, we'll see you then. Bye. Coder right there. <laughs>